Hey, I'm John Greaves III. I'm the founder of Garage Gym Life, and this is a different sort of video than I normally post. Um, this is going to be a conversation with my guy, Keenan, who uh, I actually need to apologize to because I set the Zoom time up, and then I got into video editing. And so, my man, uh, you logged on as scheduled, and then I wasn't there, so I was late to class. So I apologize. Um <laughs> I hate wasting people's time, but I do appreciate you taking the time to run it back with me. So we're going to go ahead and make this happen and keep it short. That way you can get back to enjoying the rest of your Saturday. So welcome to the channel. No, thank you for having me, giving me the opportunity to come on here and uh, state my case. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, I do think it's important, uh, even beyond the comments, because one, I think truth matters. And two, I can just say in my own personal life, being given good information that impacts my life made a difference in my life in 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 the context of fitness. Okay. So, uh, all right. It is, it is important to me. All right. So, let's say let give everybody a. Uh, I'm gonna post the link to the video that started all of this in the description for this video. And then also, it's going over my head right now. It's going to pop up over my head so you guys can see it. Um, but essentially, what I did was uh, I posted, a, I shared a video with permission from someone named Kristen O'Brien, who is a self-described fitness junkie. She enjoys doing a lot of different training modalities. And I happened to see her doing one on Instagram. And I said, oh, shoot, that's pretty cool. Uh, it's interesting. So I shared it on my YouTube shorts feed, right? And then I started, you know, the video was all right. I didn't really expect much out of it. But then Keenan came on six days ago and uh, made a comment. And so I'm looking at these comments. In fact, I'm going to post it up on the screen so people can see that. So the first, the way that we first engaged was Keenan came on and said the most useless skill. Okay, so why do you say that's the most useless skill? I mean, by your own words, when you describe the movement, you didn't say it was useful. You said it was interesting. Okay. That's not useful. So I think it's important to distinguish people who are in the industry who make money from those who are actually out here trying to give people rock solid advice on what's beneficial to them. Okay. Now, when I saw the video, I was just scrolling through TikTok, laying in my bed. How, so, hold on, pause. How did you see it on TikTok? I don't even post it on TikTok, but uh, whatever it is, short or whatever YouTube? it is. YouTube? Yeah, well, YouTube short, right? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, it's all the same stuff. Um, uh, I'm 40 years old, so I, I really don't. Yeah, I just see a clip, whatever, it's TikTok. It's a name brand at this point. You're 40 years uh, old, so you don't care about but, technology. No, don't get it twisted. I'm a software engineer, but there are so many platforms ah. that, for cool. example, right, all guns now, or most of them, are striker-fired and polymer. So if I use the term Glock to refer to a gun, it really doesn't necessarily mean a specific type type of gun is under the category of all guns like that. A striker fired semi-automatic gun. That's polymer. Everybody I see, can, I see your point. It's, it's right, like saying so cool. I want to Xerox something. I mean, I think exactly, the six hour exactly. people might object to your example. use of the term Glock to describe their product, but I, right. I get it. That's Xerox, a better example. Kleenex. Xerox. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Words exactly. matter. Yeah. Right. So well. It depends on the context, right? No, words matter because words are the well, means that by which we communicate. But semantic can be divorced from the words, right? So the meaning of words change over time. That's why we have a subject called etymology. The context of words changes over time depending on the experience of the listener with that word and the activity that relates to the word. So English is a living, breathing language, and so it does change over time. Um, the semantics it, also it, change. It reflects, it reflects uh, the predominant habits of the people who are using English. However, the purpose of language is to communicate. So if you say X, 
and everybody thinks X means this, but you personally think X means something different, then you haven't communicated. Because well, remember, it means we're leads. not talking we're not talking about communication, right? Because then we can get into verbal and nonverbal language. What we're I'm not talking, talking about, about communicating? No, I'm talking about words and their meanings. That's a separate is, subject. That's a separate subject from communication. Tell me how the meaning of a word, the, the meaning of any word is separate from communication. Which because is conveying can, conveying can, ideas verbally or in the Because you can you can you can know words without communicating them. So sure. communication is the actual action. But I can word think is, words without communicating. I can think exactly. a word without communicating, yes. Right, exactly. So they're not, they, one doesn't, is not necessary for the other. So all I, all, I guess all I'm trying to get across is, and I know this is in our debate, the linguistics debate. <laughs> all I'm trying to get so. across is that the meaning of words change. That's not a debate, that's yes. a fact. And the that's connotation of words changes, yes. I mean, the, the, I'm talking about the actual definition. Because there's connotation and denotation. But yes, however, well, if I look in the dictionary and I look up gerund, it's still going to have the same meaning in the definition. Now, sometimes what the dictionary will do as they revise it is they will add meanings. And they may say, uh, they may call an original definition archaic, but well, what it's does that still, mean? That means it's, it's but it's still, yeah, but it's not going, you said it's not going to change. It's going to add, you said the actual definition. And what happens is you, Add to the definition of a word, and then what, what the does it mean will if do, you introduce then the a new will put context. To a word? It will also put context. The dictionary will put context. It'll say in context. It'll say like this, and it gives you examples of how the word is used. But you, you can't say that nowadays sword means something other than a device that is that has a blade and is used to cut or stab. But it also has well, a ceremony, but it also has the connotation of a device used for ceremonial purposes to salute someone as a promotion tool. But it's still a bladed object that's used, it's still a weapon. It's just the the, the connotations change and you can add meanings to the definition. It doesn't change. But let's move on. The point is, I you said uh that I said in the thing that it's interesting, and that means that it's inherently useless. And I don't agree with that because I don't think that useful things are inherently not interesting because that is the reverse of what you said that if it's interesting it can't be useful you didn't describe it as useful i didn't describe it as anything i said in the title of the video i need to interview this home genome in this in this interview we're having you described it as something i still think it's it interesting. useful i still think yeah. it's interesting right but which doesn't mean that useful. i don't think but that doesn't mean i don't think it's useful i still think it's interesting you didn't communicate that okay I'll go for that. But that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying you didn't think that or whatever, or we can still argue about whether it is or not. I'm just right. I'm just pointing out that even subconsciously, when you were describing right. the movement to everyone, the first word wasn't useful or even functional. Okay. Now here's where I would get into my main part of my argument. That's good. Because you so far you've said that it's not use that you said it wasn't useful because I don't think it's useful. No, that's, I didn't say because. I said... I asked even, you, why do you say it's not useful? You said, well, it's in how you it's in how you even described it. That doesn't explain why you but I didn't originally say causation. said, why is... Okay, well, let me ask you directly. Why did you say it's the most useless skill? Sure. Um, but again, I think it's important that even in your own description, you didn't use useful. The reason why Let's not I worry said about why was, I think. Why did you well, say gonna, it? No, I no, I'm I'm going to use every argument and every word that you use. Start against with you. the That's one that. Debated. Start with your opinion because you didn't even know what I thought of it when you first wrote that. So why why did you originally first say this is the most useless skill? Well, you don't know what I knew or what assumptions I made at that time. You don't know what I think. Well, if you do, what am I thinking well, right I now? I know now because you said it's interesting. You, don't, you can't read my mind. So you don't know what I thought when I first made it. And so when you first typed in the most useless skill, you don't have any idea what I was thinking at that time. So again, why did you, Keenan, say this is the most useless skill after watching a shorts video? Well, the reason why I felt like that is because I think of in all the things... Well, let's let's put it this way. 
when we do any exercise, what are we doing it for? We're doing it either to practice a skill that we want to refine, or we want to uh, get some kind of adaptation over time. So let's deal with the skill part first. The skill like bowling, like throwing a baseball is something you do over and over again so that on a specific day, you can perform it in that specific way. And the skill is usually part of some game. It could be a piano recital, it, but it has a specific use case that you intend to exhibit on the day of performance. Okay. Now, I, I'm, I would love to hear from you, at least on the skill side, I haven't dealt with the adaptation aspect, but on the skill side, do you think that as a skill, standing on your head in a tripod pose with your knees on top of your elbows has a use case? Yeah. Now, let's go back to you. Why did you say this is the most useful, useless skill? Because you keep asking me what I out. think. No, you didn't. I just you laid said, that out. No, you didn't. What you did was define the purpose of ex the two purposes of exercise. You didn't right. say why you said that this particular activity was the most useless skill. Because it doesn't have a use case. Okay. I thought that, I, I mean, that was implicit in my question to you. Because if okay. I thought it had a use case, I right. wouldn't be making so this argument. Don't... So let's skip to the adaptation. No, no, no. Phase. So now I'm going to ask you another question. So Go you ahead. don't think it has a use case. That makes sense. You don't see the point. Just to paraphrase, you no, don't see the I, point. It's not me. It's not me. Yeah, but there we're talking about no... your opinion. We're talking about your opinion. No, it's, right? a, it's a fact. You can't, obviously, so no, hold on. The reason why I can't say it's a fact is because that you would imply can, I that. Can. Have at it. But I'm telling you that it's your opinion because somebody thinks it's a useful skill. Or else she wouldn't have done it in the Somebody first place. Somebody thinks the world is flat. She wouldn't have done it in the first place. So I, we can't say universally we agree it's not a useful skill because at least one person thinks it's a useful skill, the person who actually did it. And then she's not the first person to ever do that. So that means that everybody else that does it thinks that there's a purpose to doing it, right? So I'm just saying now that you have said that the reason why you think it's a useless skill is you don't see the point of it, that it doesn't have any practical value, I can then say, okay, I would, it, to me, as I stated to you, it depends on whatever your goal is, right? You said it's a circus trick and it's not a solution for any problem, right. which is not true. Well, what's the problem? So she, Kristen, is trying to build the ability to do a handstand. And so she is trying to spend more time in that position uh, or as close to that position as she can. So she modified it backwards and she's practicing getting into and out of the uh, handstand position. And she's also using the fact that she's bringing her knees down, kind of like the way that you would reduce the weight if you were doing, say, a shoulder press and you've got however much weight and you say, okay, I want to continue my time and attention. So I'm going to put these dumbbells down. I'm fatigued. I'm going to grab some lighter dumbbells and continue in the same in the same uh, axis of movement. So what she's doing is extending her time and attention by changing the moment at angle by moving her legs around so that she's in that position. So the re reason she's doing it is because she specifically wants to build up time in that position, building her way towards being able to do a handstand. So for her, it is a means to being able to actually do a handstand. So for her, it's useful. So I can't say that it's not a solution to any problem. Now, whether it's a successful solution to any problem, problem, she can't do a handstand. She wants to be able to do a handstand. That's a problem. Well, okay. <laughs> That's a so, problem. So hold on. So here's the problem with what you're saying, because you're going at it from the bias of it, of being able to do a handstand, not being important. It's not important to you. It's not important to you. But it being it not being important to you is irrelevant to someone who doesn't know you or care about your opinion. And what percentage has different of people goals to would you say a it doesn't matter? Is I don't, it is because that's how we determine when something's useful. Uh, actually, that may be how you determine whether something's useful for you. How do you determine something's useful? 
I determine that something's useful because it is something that builds me towards something that I want to do, a goal that or an activity that I want to accomplish. In fact, it's not just me. The definition of useful is able to be used for a practical purpose or in several ways. And so she- Is a handstand practical? Yeah. Practical for what? Uh, well, so let's go with- right. Uh, no, no, no. Let's go with the most. No... Let's go with the most obvious solution. The, I mean, the, the biggest goal. The most big. The biggest goal. If I want to go to the Olympics and I can't do a handstand, my chances of winning a gold medal are dramatically decreased because I can't do it. Well, if I want to hold gymnastics, also, if I want to be able to go to the CrossFit Games and earn a living doing CrossFit, and handstand walks are a fundamental CrossFit movement, and I can't even do a handstand in a static position, then mm -hmm. I am at a disadvantage with my fellow athletes. So those are just two reasons why somebody might want to do a handstand. Also, it is important for you to be able to spend time upside down because oh, yeah. that's just good for you in health in terms of health in general. Hey, Amen. That might be one of the goals that you have personally, because you told me that you raised your squat to 550 pounds. But I would wager that most of the people who watch this video have zero interest in matching your goals 100%, just like I don't. Okay. And I would say that if it's successful for you, that's great. But you don't have the right to dictate what is a goal or worthwhile goal for someone else. You just do not. I mean, no, you do not have, do you do not fundamentally have the right to determine what is a worthwhile goal well, we're not for another about feeling, right. thinking human being. Yes, we are. You said no, it's not useful I'm, I'm and not, you don't want her I'm to not, do it. I'm not and, an official. So we're not talking about rights. You're we're not about, anything that can tell. There's no official we're, on the planet that can determine whether you're not. There's no official on the we're planet about that can determine what somebody else's goal for life should be. That's like me telling you that you can't go have dinner wherever you want tonight. What right do you I have tell, to control you? Can say your whatever life? you want. Well, possibly, but what you are then is someone who. But I can't their say time. that you don't have the right to tell me that. You don't. That's. You there's do have the right to say that. You do not. The Thirteenth Amendment says you don't. The First Amendment the says you 13th, do. The First Amendment says you can the say what you want. The First Amendment says you have the says right to you the freedom of expression. You cannot control someone else. That, the word control doesn't even appear in the Constitution. Well, what do you think you're doing? You, what do you the think word, you're trying to do right now? You just said, you just said that that's what in the fact, 13th Amendment means. Yeah, let's mean. move along. Unless you want to strengthen okay. your spine or build the ability to stabilize your core or just post something that gets trolls to comment on your video and build engagement for the algorithm. This is the most fun part of the video because honestly, I would not have continued with the argument because as everybody who's watching can see, we ain't going to agree anyway. So at this point at a party, I would just say, all right, then and I'd walk off. And similarly on my YouTube channel, I normally just play and whatever. Okay, I'm not going right, to Because you're running care. a business. But and at the same time, I was like, you're not, I looked, I was you're like, not hey. fundamentally trying to find out what's true. Really? That's the difference between us. I don't have an LLC. I don't think form I, I, I don't think that you were fundamentally trying to find out what's of what true. fitness should be. No. That's I go not. where the evidence shows me. Okay, so you think that there's no so evidence the for hands are being on your side, obviously, you don't, to defend a video you don't that you think, put. No, no, no. You don't think that doing a handstand and being it's upside practical. down is practical. Exactly. All right. And okay. you still haven't demonstrated that because the CrossFit game is not practical and neither is being a gymnast. Oh, the Do CrossFit. you know what the... Hold on. That's like saying that the NBA is not practical. No, it's not. Why do you need to play basketball? Well, I mean, it's a way to... Most people don't play basketball. Therefore, it's not Whoa. practical. Hold Therefore, on. it's not It doesn't useful. matter whether most people can do it. The fact of the matter is it's a way to earn a living to feed your family. No, I didn't What's say most people can't that? do it. No, I no, said no. most people don't do it. You said it's not practical, it. and I don't care about that. The fact of the matter is you said it's not practical. That's what the discussion the is. The definition the of practical... The discussion is whether it's useful. You don't think being able to feed your family is practical? Do you have to play basketball to feed your family? It is a way to do it. And so is the CrossFit And what games. percentage of people do that? What does that have to do with it actually being a way to feed your family? Because if which we're makes talking about a use case, we have to talk in generalities. What Why do we makes have to the do most that? sense? Why do we have to do that? Because that's the basis. Why do we have to talk in generalities? That's because the generalities oh, are Oh, actually, basis. let me you back up. You question, can I answer? And actually, let me back up. Because I want to, I'll let you answer, but I want to back up and I'm going to put this in the hopper too. Okay. Because we're, I... I say in terms of practicality, I look at 
what the thing is going to do for you beneficially. And I say, if it's going to, number one, help you be healthier, it's practical. If it's something that's going to help you earn a living to feed your family, it's practical. If it's something that you just enjoy as a pastime, then, so for mental health, I mean, as opposed to physical health, then it is practical. So those are my three things, okay? So now, so go to, so let's circle back and I want you to finish your point and then we'll get to what I just said. Because I thought the reason I interrupted you is because I figured that we weren't really kind of seeing what each other's, um, like what the viewpoint is, like where I'm coming at, what practical is. Okay, go ahead. You're matching what the specific individual wants to do to whatever their specific um, exercise or activity right. is. Yes. Right. Yes. So I understand, I understand that mindset, but I'm, I'm speaking in generalities because this wasn't, this wasn't something that she done inside of her home. Yes, it she, is. No, no, I'm saying without the cameras, right? Privately. I'm saying this is something she's suggesting is useful to other people. Okay. Right. So that's I mean, and these are the kind of assumptions I'm working under. So that's why statistics and generalities are important. Obviously, if you're a hockey player, having a hockey stick is practical to that specific instance. But if you're on the Internet, you know, slapping a a hockey puck or playing hockey and saying every, you know, this is useful to everybody, then I'm going to take an issue with that. I mean, increases your chances of uh, meeting Ninja Turtles in the sewer. Exactly. That, and that's my exact argument. It's not practical in the context in which the argument is made, which is on the Internet for everybody to see as a, suggested, as a suggestion for, hey, you should try this activity. I think, personally, that a squat is more functional and useful. And getting that squat from whatever it is and adding 300 pounds to it makes it even more useful. And there's no use case that I can think did, did. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is the squat is useful in every case. There's no case in which a squat is not useful. Huh? So posting something like a squat online for people to emulate makes sense. Posting a handstand or breaking down a handstand into its various forms in the, in the attempt to reach that goal is not practical okay. in the context in which it's made, which is on the internet for people to emulate. That's what I'm saying. Okay. You know, you know, so when we talk about basketball, 1% of people play basketball. It's much more likely for somebody to go to school, get an education, to get a job as a software engineer or in STEM than it is to become a basketball player or a singer or a rapper. Those careers, even though people are in them, are not practical in the context in, uh, in the context of, hey, everybody should do this. So that's what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking okay. not only what's the use case on an individual level, but what has the most use to the most people. And I understand that that's a degree above, you know, the specific um, narrow uh, uh, use case that you're looking at. But I, I have to, I, as I absorb the media, I'm saying, why is this person putting it on the internet? It wasn't okay. like, you know, so that's, that's where I was coming. Okay. So um, my rebuttal to that is that I believe that if you only put things up that are filtered through what most people think is necessary or practical, then that sort of censorship causes the 1% of people who may see this thing and may realize that this is a way for them to play basketball, get a college scholarship and end up as a software engineer. Right. Well, people would then miss out on that. And my approach to the internet is, it is like going to the library. I don't go to the library and I read it and read every book. Instead, I read the books that apply to what I'm trying to accomplish at the time. And the internet is just a giant library, whether it's video, uh, audio, or written word. And so when I see somebody post something, 
especially if it's something I have zero inclination to try, what I typically say to myself is this simple phrase, that's not for me. And then that doesn't interfere with their, and you, most of the time, I also say this because I don't believe in knocking somebody. I don't believe in, uh, to quote one of my favorite reporters, I don't believe in yucking another person's yum. Uh, so I'm not going to post troll comments to put down what someone else is doing but in that and, ha and, and having fun. I'm not knocking what some, yeah, I believe that's, self, that's sort of You're knocking what I'm doing. I'm knocking the fact that you don't have a problem with exactly. going on and distancing somebody else. This is my else. yum. Okay, well, your yum is being a troll. Exactly. Okay, my yum is being your yum is to being a troll. And is being that's able fine. to. My yum now, is supported this, by the no, First Amendment, actually, and it's also it is it is supported exactly. by the First Amendment. So so hold on. So I'm the one that tells you you could come on. Then. You could come on here and say Since what you want to say. Misuse the word. I'm letting you come on and let you say what you want to say. So I'm definitely not censoring you. In fact, you're I'm telling, going. To, I'm going. But you said beyond. you don't knock what people do, and you're knocking I'm what not. I'm doing. Yeah, I don't. I don't agree with it. But I still okay. brought you on. But I still brought you on and gave you I a platform, that, right? But do I say that you're censoring? Did I me? not give you a platform? Yeah, you brought me on to tell okay. me what I can't say. I brought you on and gave you a platform. You brought me on to tell me what I can't say. Okay, I brought you on to give you a platform. Most people wouldn't have done that. They would have just said, in fact, the advice I, people were giving me was don't even bring him on. Trolls just want attention. I'm like, well, no, I'm going to let him come on because I don't want people thinking that um, I, I don't appreciate all forms of uh, all viewpoints. All right. I appreciate your viewpoint. I don't agree with it, but I appreciate it. So I just say, hey, well, come on, man, say what you want to say. Um, now let's skip ahead to the next thing. You said, I hate fake fitness trainers telling people to do goofy things to get strong. Whoever's watching this, don't do this silly circus workout. There are more logical ways to get strong. This lady is not strong. She's only generating about 45 pounds of force. All right. Um, then I said, then we scrolled along and you made the point, said, this is my account. So I write comments so other people can see my comments about your bad advice. All right. right. So I said, well, here's the thing. I didn't give advice in the video. I just posted the video. And in fact, the title of the video was, I need to interview this home gym, this uh, home gym owner. That's it. I just, I want to interview her. Now you said, I'm a software engineer. I just, not a fitness influencer. I just point out fake trainers like Liver King and you. So that's where we're trying to get to. All right. I don't care about the Liver King part. That's whatever. However, I said, you're criticizing a video of someone who's doing something she enjoys in her home while incorrectly stating is a use, useless skill. We already covered that. And simultaneously incorrectly calling me a fitness trainer. And oh, I'm you're like, not a fitness trainer? No. Oh. In fact, it's all over my channel. I, I am a journalist for the home gym community. I show home gym culture. I show products that relate to having a home gym and I connect home gym owners to resources that help them succeed in the goals that they have in their home gyms. I'm not a fitness trainer. And I kept trying to tell you that you kept saying, no, no, no. I, and then you said, you call me Einstein. I tried you. to say no. Then you said, you said, I never said it was a fact that you're a trainer. So let's scroll back up. Okay. And again, you said, I just point out fake trainers like liver King and you. Okay. So you call me a trainer. I'm not a trainer. And all I want to say is you can't. Well, I said you're not a trainer, it. right? Because a fake no, trainer is didn't. not a trainer, right? Yeah. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> but I'm not any of the I don't I don't coach people to do exercises. All I do is put up uh, it's just no, a I snapshot understand. of what's going on. Okay. No, I'm just flicking through and I saw a lady trying to do something silly. The title and of the video said it's not even me in the video. I was like, no, what is this? You're taking it personal, but you have to understand from a user's point of view, I'm just looking at the video. I thought it was the lady's so you didn't look video. At the so you didn't look at the title? No, I didn't look through all the details, no. You didn't look I'm at just, the title. I didn't say description. You didn't look at the title. Yeah, I didn't look at any of that. I just looked at the person doing the exercise, and I assumed that she, po she posted it because all when right. I post a video of me doing a squat, it's me, you know, I'm the one who posted it. So I didn't realize you posted someone else's video. Correct. So I wasn't speaking directly to you. I don't know you. I've never seen your face. It's the first right. time. You know? All right. So um, that's what, that's all that is. I wouldn't rest on that too much. 
my main point is, and I take your point that people have specific goals. I mean, obviously we all have specific goals. I guess I'm just saying I should have the freedom to say what I want. Sure. You got a YouTube channel. Say what you want on it. No, I mean, I said what I wanted in the comments. That's how I platform myself. Okay, so, so when you post videos on your YouTube channel. That's just really that's I have my coach that's for in you. Texas. No, no, not even for me. I have a coach. That's for your coach Texas. to look at you. Yeah, yeah. So I post them there and then people started commenting on or doing whatever on the thing. So I'm, you know, I'm not trying to like build the channel at all. No, I I'm just saying like you got your channel is a platform for you to talk. Whereas the entire you, YouTube is a platform. So commenting on other people's things. Okay. Yeah, for everybody. That's why the comments exist. Okay. So, All right. So as we wrap up, yeah. fundamentally, uh, I'm going to give you the last word. Okay. Oh, don't do that. Oh, uh, I don't know. If you talk too long, I just end the video. Uh, but I, I, I might say something you don't I will, like. Uh, you, everything you've said, I don't like. Okay. I don't know. I mean, everything you said, I don't like. <laughs> let's just start. Uh, let's right. just go with that. But I'm <laughs> okay. also at the, but I'm also at the point where I understand that I can't convince other people, and so I don't. I'm not trying to convince you. I just <laughs> promised that I would give you a pla- a forum to state your case clearly, and I did that. Okay. Um, I don't need to. I, I don't have and any. Emotion- to you for that. I don't have an emotional need for agreement with other people. Uh, I, I'm too old for that. So, um, I don't agree with the things you say. I don't agree with the premise of your argument. I think that people should that people should do what gives them joy, what makes their soul sing, and what propels them closer to the goal that they have set for themselves at that time. And if that goal changes next year, then start pushing towards that one because we do enough things for other people just to be able to put food in our uh, refrigerators that you should need to have something that represents you you specifically and if you're willing to do that and if you're willing to put yourself out there on the internet for people to comment on people to trash knock whatever and celebrate kudos to you because not everybody has that sort of that level of courage okay keenan yeah so i i don't disagree with you i would just say that i was speaking to my people the people who may mistake what that lady was doing or the video you posted as some way to improve a practical aspect of themselves or an, another way to put it would be for a larger group of people to assume that these types of exercises have use cases um, beyond the, the narrow goal that she was using it for. So yeah, if you want to do a handstand, by all means do that. It's not a way to practically um, make improvements in your day-to-day life for most people. So in, like, in the example that you gave, if you're going to the Olympics or you're going to do CrossFit, great. Practice your, practice your handstand. Other than that, get your squat from 225 to 550 like I did in 18 months with two knee surgeries and an ankle surgery. That's made much more difference in my life. It's made a difference in my mother's life and her friend's life. And that's all I'm passionate about because I see far too many people on the internet recommending all kinds of silly BS for people to do. And I feel like no one holds them accountable because you're supposed to support everybody. No, that's, that's not my... That, that's not what I'm responsible for doing. I'm responsible for staying true to myself and saying what I think. And I appreciate you for giving me the opportunity to do so on this platform. 